welcome to a new edition of the Everlast Power video series. In this edition, we'll continue to take a look at the Everlast Power iMig 140E and cover accessories and setup. The new iMig 140E is part of the latest generation of inverter MIG welders from Everlast. As mentioned last time, this inverter MIG welder operates on 120 volt power and is capable of holding up to a 12 pound roll of wire. For a 120 volt MIG, it's not short on capability and it comes with a complete complement of accessories so that you only need to supply the wire and gas to start welding. Of course, the unit comes with a MIG torch. This is a Trafomet Ergo Plus 15. This MIG torch is one of the nicest quality MIG torches you'll find on the market in this class of MIG. Current models feature torches that are 6 feet in length. Models for next year will see a longer length torch. Currently, we do have longer length torches available as an economical upgrade option. The welder also includes an improved regulator over the regulator you normally find in our older series MIG welders. This new heavy duty regulator features brass billet construction and a floating ball design for the most accurate control over gas flow. The unit also includes a standard duty work clamp for operation similar to what you'd find in other MIG units in the 140 amp class. Now there are a few things that you'll notice missing from the 140E compared to most of the other Everlast Power I MIG units that are not really critical for service. There are no digital meters. There is no arc force control. And lastly you will not find a stick weld feature on this unit. Now while these items are missing, the unit still has the equivalent features you'd find on any other transformer MIG. The unit is capable of flux core operation with the optional flux core drive rollers. Completing the required connections for the unit to operate is quite simple, thanks to the quick connect fittings on both the torch and the work clamp. To complete the connection on the torch, simply line up the Euro quick connector so that all the parts mate together with the socket. Give a slight push to engage the torch and snug the plastic collar down finger tight only. For the work clamp connection, simply line up the locating tab on the connector, insert and twist until it is locked in. To connect the gas regulator, simply uncoil the supplied hose and attach it to the regulator and hose bar fitting on the rear with hose clamps. After tightening, check for leaks. Next year, models in the U.S. are slated to use a standard 5.8 CGA fitting at the rear of the unit. In order to load an 8 inch spool of wire, remove the thumb nut that serves as the spool tensioner, then remove the underlying spring. Next remove the outer support collar. Note that the collar is divided with a ridge and it has a shallow side and a deep side. Load the spool with the wire coming off from the bottom. When feeding, the wire should rotate clockwise. Reassemble the collar with the shallow shoulder turned in to support the spool and adjust the thumb nut pressure so the roll does not easily coast when spun. If you're installing a 4 inch roll, make sure the deep side of the shoulder is turned in to center and sandwich the smaller roll. Once the wire tension has been set, carefully remove the wire that is typically secured to the side of the roll. Do not allow the wire to despool. If necessary, place your free hand directly on the wire during the process to prevent the wire from decoiling from the roll. Trim the wire so that it is straight and will feed into the wire feeder. The wire should start smoothly into the flexible pickup tube on the wire feeder. Before feeding the wire further into the gun, check and make sure the correct drive roll groove is selected. Remove the black retaining nut by turning counterclockwise and then carefully remove the outer drive roll from the inner carrier. There is a square key that holds this in place. Once you've verified the correct groove will be used, reinstall and tighten the nut. Be sure to release the tensioner handle before inserting the wire. 
Once released, the top drive roll will pop up and you can use your finger to carefully guide the wire across the lower drive roll groove and into the gun side of the feeder. Manually feed several inches into the gun. Raise the tensioner and carefully adjust the pressure so the wire can slip slightly if an obstruction is encountered. At this point, it's a good idea to double check that you've selected the correct polarity for the type wire you are using. To swap polarity, loosen the terminal screws and switch the cable positions. For MIG, the cable attached to the wire feeder should be attached to the positive terminal. For most flux score wires, the feeder should be attached to the negative. However, check the wire manufacturer's directions in selecting the correct polarity. To finish feeding the wire into the gun, turn the unit on and press the gun trigger to feed the wire. Normally you should hold the cable as straight as possible during this final stage. You should feel the wire feeding through the cable and out the tip. Occasionally it may be necessary to remove the tip to get the wire to feed all the way through the gun and out the end. Once the wire has fed through, trim the wire to about one half inch stick out. This concludes today's edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. Join us for the next edition when we'll examine the welding capabilities of the Power iMig 140E. As always, if you have more questions about the product presented, call us at 877-755-9353. And if you haven't yet, we welcome you to come visit our new website at www.everlastwelders.com.